good day ladies and gentlemen this is dr frel your professor good morning class we're back in our course and our topic this morning is on educational leadership for teachers and educators first class is for us to de define what educational leadership is this is defined as uh, to examine functions of leadership and management of uh, the school system and its function again class educational leadership examines functions of leadership and management of the school system and its functions at the same time it explores organizational theories models of theories, models of leadership and management, and of personal and organizational chains. So in short class, educational leadership bridges the theories to practical applications in educational settings. Next is for us to define education. Education in general sense is the form of learning in which the knowledge, the skills, and habits of a group of people are being transferred from one generation to the next through teaching, training, or research. Or it can be defined as a process of acquiring knowledge and delivering such knowledge to others. So when we, we say knowledge, this our, our awareness of ourselves and our surroundings and when we ask about awareness it is uh, a process no? of knowing about our personal potentials our faculties our dreams and our desires or when you say knowing our surroundings no? that is knowing with its realities, its structures, its requirements, uses, and of course, its relationship to self. That is also known as knowledge. Now, what is leadership? This is also defined as a process of, of social influence which one person can enlist the aid and support of others in the accomplishment of a common task. For example, some understand a leader simply as somebody whom people follow or somebody who guides or directs others, while others may define leadership as and as uh, organizing a group of people to achieve a common goal. Uh, some studies of leadership have produced theories involving uh, the situational, uh, involving traits, no? situational interaction, functions, uh, behavior, no? power, vision, and values or even charisma and intelligence among others. Now it's time for us to define uh, school or educational leadership. So school leadership is defined as a process of enlisting and guiding the talents and energies, no, energies of teachers, pupils, and parents toward achieving common educational Aims. While in contrast to administration and management, they are terms that suggest stability through the exercise of control and supervision. This concept of leadership was favored because it conveys dynamism and proactivity. The principal or the school head is commonly taught, thought to be the school leader. However, school leadership may include other persons such as members of a formal leadership team and other persons who contribute 
toward the aims of the school. Now, my next question is, when it comes to educational leadership, which style is most appropriate? So, there are types of leadership styles in education. Since education is an important aspect of human life, and how we receive and translate education into our daily way of life is quite largely dependent upon the way it, get, it gets passed on. So, educational leadership has been studied over years to address long-standing concern of students, of educators, of society as a whole. So, there are three types of leadership styles of education. The hierarchical, the transformational, and the facilitative. Now, let's discuss each type one at a time. We start with the hierarchical style of educational leadership. So, this style of leadership is based on the traditional method of education, which, which emphasis is on top-down approach with formal authority and little scope for participatory analysis. So, the administrative head or the principal carries out all duties of a planner, a supervisor, an analyst, a resource allocator, and other functions no, or duties to be performed by a head. So, this is a very straightforward no, with uh, major emphasis on efficiency, on control, and of course, on routines. While the second style it is the transformational. This is based on working together to put a place to put in place a mechanism that will win immediate benefits and future ones. So this leadership style opens the door for wide uh, the door wide for intellectual excitement of motivation through values and a shared vision by participation in the leadership activities. So even though most decisions are taken individually or by a small group of people, this transformational leadership fosters a sense of purpose and meaning to unite people for a better cause. Next is uh, the facilitative style. This has some similar strategies used in transformational style but more democratic as well as interactive in practice. So, this works with the entire management, offering partnership in preparing for the future and promoting collective ideas by being a part of the crowd rather than being at the center. So, this is more with empowering the entire education system as the primary goal. So, now class, my next question is what works best? So, what works best for which institution and how it needs to be is based on careful strategic planning and consideration of its vision. Ideally, a leader should use strategies and options flexibly to balance both short-term and long-term goals and must serve the institutional values. So, meaning... Uh, the school should have at least a, a careful strategic planning and uh, always considers no, the vision of that school. So their strategies should be uh, an answer no, or a means to attain both short-term and long-term Goals, considering, of course, the values which are being lived 
buy in that particular school. Now let's proceed with how to develop effective school leaders. So the role of a school leader has grown beyond that of an administrator as more countries require better achievement and grant greater autonomy to schools in designing curricula and managing resources. So responsibilities need to be clearly defined providing access to appropriate professional development and acknowledging their five pivotal role in improving school and student student performance performance now pass what are the rules played by teachers in school there are 10 suggested rules which are being played uh, by teachers in their respective classroom or in the school first is as a resource provider because teachers help their colleagues by sharing their instructional materials this might include our websites instructional materials or readings or other resources to use with uh, students they might also share such professional resources such as articles, books, no lessons or unit plans, and assessment tools. Sometimes that they even provide a resource to parents that needs their assistance. Second is a uh, teacher serve also as instructional specialist. They help colleagues implement effective teaching strategies. This might help might include ideas for differentiating instruction or planning lessons in partnership with fellow teachers. So this instructional specialist study and they study and explore instructional methodologies that are appropriate now for the school and they share their findings with their colleagues then third is being a curriculum specialist so by understanding content standards and how various components of the curriculum link together and how to use the curriculum in planning instruction and assessment is essential in ensuring uh, consistent curriculum implementation throughout school so the curriculum specialist they lead teachers to agree on standards to follow the adapted curriculum or to use common pacing charts and develop shared assessments then another is that of a classroom supporter these classroom supporters work inside classrooms to help teachers implement new ideas or often by demonstrating a lesson, by co-teaching, or by giving feedback. So this practice of consultation with peers enhances teachers' self-efficacy or the teachers' belief you know, in their own abilities and capacity to successfully solve teaching and learning problems no? as they reflected on practice and they grew together and it also encouraged a bias for action or improvement through collaboration on the part of the teachers the next is as uh, a learning facilitator by facilitating professional learning opportunities among staff members is another role for teacher leaders. So when teachers learn well and from one another, they can focus on what most directly improves student learning. So their professional learnings now becomes more relevant focus on teachers classroom work and aligned you know, to fill gaps in student learning the next is us mentor 
So by serving as mentor for novice teachers is a common role for teacher leaders. Mentors serve as role models. They acclimate make new teachers to a new school and they advise new teachers about instruction, about the curriculum or procedure, no? practices and politics in the school. So being a mentor takes a great deal deal of being a mentor takes a great deal of time and expertise and makes a significant contribution to the development of a new professional. Then another class is uh, being a school leader. This means serving on a committee such as a school improvement team, acting as a grade level or department chair, or supporting school initiatives, or even representing the school on community activities or on district task forces or committees. So, a school leader no, shares the vision of the school aligns his or her professional goals with those of the school and the district and even shares responsibility for the success of the school as a whole. Next is as a data code. All the teachers have access to a great deal of data. They do not often use that data to drive classroom instruction so teacher leaders can lead conversations that engage their peers in analyzing and using this information to strengthen instruction because so sometimes data are already available and the teachers fail to recognize that so teacher leaders have that uh, have to engage these uh, new teachers or their peers in analyzing and using this information to improve or in strengthen instruction. The next is they can be catalyst for change. Teacher leaders can also be catalyst for change. Visionaries who are never content with the state status quo but rather always looking for a better way so by that teachers know can take on the catalyst role feel secure in their own work and of course have a strong commitment to continual improvement they pose questions to generate analysis of student learning then uh, last is the teachers as learners so among the most important roles teachers leaders assume is that of a learner because learners model continual improvement demonstrate lifelong learning and they use what they learn to help all the students achieve their dreams so as this saying goes life as a teacher begins the day you realize that you are always a learner and now as we summarize the rules for all teachers so teachers exhibit leadership in multiple sometimes overlapping ways some leadership roles are formal with designated responsibilities while others are more informal other more informal rules emerge as teachers interact with their peers so the variety of roles ensures that teachers can find ways to lead that fit their talents and interests Regardless of the roles they assume, teacher leaders shape the culture of their schools. They improve student learning and influence practice among their peers. Okay.
Okay, so that would be all class for this topic. And for your activity, make an interview with a principal near your residence uh, or near in your community. Then determine their, leader, their leadership style in education. Next is interview also at least two teachers that you know and ask the roles they play in their class. Then, make an analysis of their answers based on your understanding of the topic discussed in the video. So, submit your output in the Google Classroom. You have one week to prepare this activity. So, that would be all class for this morning. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.